Hi guys, I'm Raval. Welcome back to Applying TDD with PHP Unit and Laravel 5.2. I hope you've already watched part one of this video, which is the theory. This is part two, and we're going to go straight into the code. Okay guys, so at the moment I have PHP Storm open as well as a terminal. And inside PHP Storm, I have loaded up my fresh installation of Laravel. Now I'm not going to cover the installation of Laravel and how to set up a virtual host that if you're going to be watching a tutorial on testing i hope that you already have the simple skills of installing laravel and setting up a virtual host i don't have any videos for that but if you have any issues put it in the comments below and i'll try my best to give you a hand so let's go back to this example so i have laravel testing here and like i said laravel comes with php unit to open up our, our composer.json here, we're just going to make this a bit larger. And you'll see in our require section, we have PHP unit. Yours may be a bit different because I've already changed this to the latest version of PHP unit and I've added code, uh, PHP code sniffer in. So yours may be a bit different, but don't worry. As long as you have PHP unit in here, you should be fine to follow along. Now, um, let's take a look at our test folder. This comes with Laravel, and we have an example test and test case here. If you open up test case, make this a bit larger. The standard base URL should just be localhost, but I've already updated this to match my virtual host that I've set up for this uh, project. It's a local Laravel testing at Coda UK. Make sure you set that up. And in our browser, we can take a look at our domain here and we have Laravel 5, excellent stuff. Back in PHP Storm. So let's take a peek at example test. So I'll just make this a bit larger. Cool, so we have example test here and we have test basic example. So this is a basic functional test. What it does is it opens up the home page and then it expects to see Laravel 5. And of course, we've seen that. We open up our homepage, we see Laravel 5. And this is just out of the box test. And to run this test, what you need to do is type in PHP unit. But if you hit enter, sometimes you may get an error. Um, if you're one of the few that do, does get this error, all you need to do is go to vendor bin PHP unit and I'll just remove that there you go hit enter and it runs our test so straight away it says okay with a green flag and that's excellent it says we pass our first test so you see we ran the command it gives us PHP unit with the version number it runs the test it gives us how long it took to execute the test and it shows us how much memory it used to run the test and then gives us the success or failure message. So this is good stuff. It shows that PHP unit installs working properly and uh, our test, test basic example works fine. So now what we're going to do is add a new feature to this website. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna develop this new feature using TDD. So what is TDD again? That means we're going to write a test first and then write code to make that test pass. So what is this feature we are going to do? Well, all I want to do is click on a button, be redirected to another page, and I want to see a calculation of area between length and width, and I just want to see the results on the page. So I don't actually want to see the calculation, I just want to see the result on the page. So let's write our test. Now, I already have some code and tests written up just to speed this tutorial along. And we're going to replace this. Okay, so we're still going to have test basic example, but I've modified it a bit. So the first thing we do is we're going to visit the home page, just as before. We are then going to click on a link by saying this click, click me. So the name of the link is click me. Then I'm going to see the area of a shape. 
by saying this C and I'm going to hard code 20 because in our test we want to see 20 and then we're going to say assert the current URL is shape so we're going to say C page is shape and also of course we're going to have our parameters so length and width and that's how we're going to uh, determine the shape of 20 so this test expects a URL to have 10 and 2 and it expects the area to be 20. So let's run this test. What do you guys expect is going to happen? Of course we're going to have errors and that's because we haven't written the code yet. So let's go about doing that. The first thing we're going to do is go to our roots file. Make this a bit larger. Once again, I've already got the code here. We're going to put in our new root, and it's going to be root shape. And we're going to have our while cards for length. And we're going to have it for width as well. Our name is shape, and we're going to use shape controller at calculate area. So do you think that's enough to pass this test? Of course, no, it is not enough. So now it's going to give us some feedback. As I say, there was one error. Example test, test basic example, could not find a link with a body name or ID attribute, click me. So if we go back to our test here, it says click me. So it can visit the home page, but then it can't click on anything. So let's put that in. So we're going to have our welcome page. And we're going to see, okay, we have that there, but we don't have our link. Let's make this a bit larger for you and let's add our link. So we're going to add our link. It's going to go to shape and we're going to have 10 2, and we're going to say click me. So do you think we've satisfied the test? We're running it again. It says failures. So let's go up the page. Oh, well, scroll up here. And it says there's one failure, example test, test basic example, a request to local Laravel testing, shape 10.2 failed, received status code 500, go down a bit, it says class, etc, etc, shape controller does not exist. And of course, it doesn't exist. In our roots, we say go to shape controller, but we haven't created that controller. So let's do that. Let's go app, HTTP, controllers. Okay, so we're going to go new file and we're going to call that shape controller.php and as expected I already have the code for this controller so I'm just going to copy that over make that a bit larger for you okay so now we have public function calculate area return 20 and now let's try passing this test failures so it says did not land on expected page and that's because it has two forward slashes here and I think I know why if we just go back to the example test um, actually test case yep as you can see if you just make this larger I have accidentally added an extra forward slash we can just remove that close that down run this again and great now we pass the test so if we go back to our tests here we say visit home page, click the click me link, then you're going to see 20 on page shape 102. Now let's go to our browser. We can refresh the page. Great, we have our click me link. Click it and we see 20. I hope you can see that value, but it says 20. It says local and Laravel test in the code UK forward slash shape 10 and 2. So our first test is done, it works, and that's excellent. So let's write our second test. So now you saw the TDD way of how we would write code to match this test. So now we have some code and what we want to do, if we take a look at our code again in shape controller, it, it returns 20. But what we want to do is refactor this to make sure that the code is dynamic. It takes the two parameters and actually returns the area. And to do this, we're going to write a test, a unit test this time, to test the calculate area function to see if it's going to return the area correctly. Now to do that, we're going to go back to example test. I already got the code 
for this new test. I am just going to copy it over quickly. Okay, so we have public function test calculate area. Now remember with PHP unit, each method needs to start with test. That's to identify that it's a test. Right, so test calculate area. So in this test, we are going to define some variables for length and width of 10 and 2 so that this test expects length and expects width to be 10 and 2. We are then going to use a new instance of the shape controller. So here, the reason is so we can access the calculate area method. And as you can see here, we have results equal to the actual calculate area method with length and width. Okay, so our 10 and 2. We then have an expected result using our 10 and 2 here, and we're just going to say length times width, of course, equals 20, and we're going to have that expected result. So we are then going to say this assert equals expected result result. So assert means you can say with certainty that this statement is true. So our test is going to say with certainty that the result coming from our calculate area method is going to equal this result length and width of 10 and 20. So if we run PHP unit again, this time it's going to run two tests. It's going to run our first test and our second one. So great, it's done that. We have now written a test that passes because remember we are refactoring this time and we're going to say, well, if we go back to shape control, it returns 20. That's what we want to see. And that's what we want to see in the future, given that we have length of 10 and width of 2. And remember, in our welcome blade, we have 10 and 2. So let's start refactoring. So calculate area, like we know, is going to accept a length. And it's going to accept a width. And we have, um, we're not going to return 20. We're going to say result equal to length times width. We're then going to say return result. And let's see, if we go to our roots, we can see, yep, if we do accept a wildcard of length and width. And in our blade, we have 10 and 2. So technically, that should return 20 if we run our test again. By the looks of it, yes, it does. So by the looks of it, we have successfully refactored this. If we hit refresh, click me again, we take 10 and 2. And yes, we still receive 20, even though we have changed the code for calculate area. And if you want to check this some more, we can go here and we can change this to 3. And that should return 30 and we change that to 4 and it returns 40. So now if we didn't have that test, we would have to play with these values and just hope that our code is working and we'll have to make a mental note and say, yes, it does work. But in this case, we have tests that prove that our link works and we have tests that prove that our uh, actual code that calculates area works as well. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope that it has introduced you to how you're going to code applying TDD. I hope that it's very clear to you now that you're going to first write tests that fail. You are then going to write code to pass those tests. Once they go green, you can revisit your code. You can refactor your tests and make sure your code remains green after refactoring. So that's what you're going to do. That's the approach I want you to take moving forward. And I hope this video has helped you a lot. Please like and subscribe below, guys. Thanks for watching.